Now, if you want to modify data that is already in the table, so you're going to modify an existing record, we're going to use the update command. Okay. We use the update command to add values to an existing row. In other words, the, the row is there, but maybe some of the columns have null values, so you want to add a value to that. Maybe when you inserted the record, you didn't have a phone number for the contact of the publisher. Now you have a phone number, you're going to use an update command to add the phone number to that existing publisher's record. Or you can change existing values. Maybe the contact person and the contact phone number from the publisher has changed. So you can use the update command to change existing values. Okay. In an update command, or an update statement, the update clause identifies the table. So we're going to say update table, and then the set clause identifies the columns being changed and the new values. Okay. So the set clause is going to contain an expression saying this column is set to or equal to the new value. Okay. You can optionally add a WHERE clause. The WHERE clause is going to put some sort of condition so that the set clause is only applied to rows that meet a certain condition. If you don't use the WHERE clause, all records will be updated. Here's the syntax diagram for that update statement. Update table name, set, here's that expression, whatever the column name is, equals the new data value. Notice the comma and the ellipse. You can update multiple columns in one set clause, in one update statement. Again, that where condition. We talked in class the example of maybe the area code has changed for phone numbers. Well, if you just have a phone number field and you don't have the phone number broken into um, you know, three parts, area code, prefix, and number, that might not be a good example. But if you can imagine that, um, where we're going to check the prefixes to determine whether or not the area code needs to be changed. And pages 150 to 153 have uh, a couple of examples of the update commands. All right. um, again, substitution variables. We did talk about this in class. Um, I, I haven't yet looked at the exercises, but I will look at the exercises to determine. Um, I, I think that we might have some trouble trying to do exercises with these substitution variables. So what I want to remind you is, if you see an exercise that asks you to use a substitution variable, I want you to try to do that exercise. If it doesn't work for you, simply report your results. You know, Tell me what you did, tell me what your results are, print screens if possible, and you won't lose any points for any exercises that asks you to use substitution variables, and it errored on you. Okay? But you've you got to be real careful. If it works for some people and it didn't work for you, it didn't work for you because you did it wrong, you know, then we definitely want to discuss that. Okay? Typically, substitution variables are used in scripts. And so what they do is the substitution variable, the user will be prompted to enter a value to go into one of the fields or to use in a con uh, one of the conditions in a WHERE clause, something like that. So the user is prompted to enter a value, and then that value entered by the user is inserted into the SQL statement to um, be used to complete the statement. Okay. Page 154 uh, shows an example, and this is only part of the example. In this particular uh, SQL statement, 
they're actually using two substitution variables. The substitution variable, the uh, name is preceded by uh, an ampersand that tells the Oracle database management system to prompt the user for a value to go into this field or column and they actually prompt for a couple of them here but you're going to see these prompts these little dialog box prompts or um, input box prompts um, one at a time so you would first see the region prompt and the user would enter a value and then click OK and then you would be you would see another prompt um, or state okay. again I mentioned in class I'm pretty sure the value that's inside these single quotes is the value here so the, the this the this word or whatever's inside these single quotes doesn't have to be the field name okay. but uh, again it would certainly want to be something along the lines of letting the user know what the statement is asking for. In this case, it's asking for a region. And in this particular field, the customer's field, um, I believe the region is a one-character field. So they put in the W, and then that's what would be used in this particular portion of the SQL statement of the update command. Okay. If you want to delete records, we're going to use a delete statement or a delete from statement. It removes a row from the table. Well, if you omit the where condition, um, it'll delete all rows. And if you add a condition, it could delete multiple rows. So it's not necessarily one row at a time. If you say delete from the table name, it will delete all rows from your table. If you add a where clause with a condition, it's going to delete the rows from the table where the condition is true. Page 156 has the um, syntax diagram and this example. And I've already mentioned this. If you omit the where clause, all rows are removed, all records are removed. Okay, transaction control is... Um, a transaction typically consists of more than one command or more than one statement, more than one action. Okay? And so what is common is to have, um, in a transaction, you have to, several steps have to occur before the transaction can be complete. In class, I use the example of, um, of a bank transfer, transfer of funds from account A to account B. If the, the, the transaction has to be a withdrawal from account A, account A and then a deposit to account B, both actions have to be successful in order for the entire transaction to be successful. Okay. So some transaction control statements. The commit command is to save the data. The rollback command is to basically like an undo. So in that example of the of the bank transaction of transferring money, if the withdrawal from account A is successful and the deposit to account B is unsuccessful for any reason, then you would want to have a rollback uh, to before the withdrawal from account A to ensure that the money doesn't get taken out of account A and not added to account B. Okay? You want both actions to be successful and before you do the commit command to save the data, the data changes. 